Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and by popular demand I'm presenting this video, and the topic of the video is all about magnifiers and other aids to your site, and I'll include lighting in that as well. And most of my viewers are old men like me, and I know that you all need some help, but I've been wearing an Optivisor for well over 40 years, maybe 50 years, I have owned one. Actually, i got three of them. And I'm going to talk about that and then all kinds of other cheaper aids that you can get. And probably a lot of you have these. And uh, let's begin, and you can see a lot of them here on the bench that I've dug out. Well, I know I'm not the only one that has this problem and needs solutions because there are several pages in catalogs, machine shop catalogs, that cover all of these products. But to start with, you can get one of these at any store. And I don't know, they're 30 or 40 bucks. They do have a light. And believe it or not, I do not use it very much, but it, but it is handy. I just have so many other devices that I can use. But generally, the engineering is so bad that they just won't stay in a position. There are friction knobs and all of that, but you know, it's just uh, poorly constructed. You probably can get a good one, you know, for 500 bucks or something that they use in a, lot, in a laboratory, but who can afford that? But it does have a pretty good size lens. I do not know what the magnification is. We have only a caution here. So I'm not going to talk any more about this. I, I think it's of limited use. But if you were working all day at a bench, uh, it would be fine. I've been wearing glasses for, oh, since I was 18. I have astigmatism. But I have trifocals now. But my optometrist, well, his name is Dr. Larry Fine. And he never could get the position of the bifocal correct. So in order to read, I have to do this. So finally I, I adopted my own answer and I buy these one dollar glasses. This is two power at the dollar store and I own a whole box of them because I bought them in every available magnification and still only cost me you know ten bucks or something. So I have a pair of these on every workbench and next to my bed and next to my reading lamp. So I find these extremely useful, but mainly for reading, but I also often wear an Optivisor. That's why I have three of them, one at the bed, one at the reading bench, and then one down here. So these are all a valuable aid. Let me show you some of the other junk in this green box. And then most of these I mark in some way some of them I even leave the little decal on, like this, and I'll have people say, don't, don't you know you have the tag on? Well, yes, I know I got the tag on. That's exactly what I want. But two power is the best for my purposes. Now, it's going to vary with you. Now, I took the liberty of buying these over the Internet some time ago, but they're too powerful. I think they, yeah, they're three power. So they hurt my eyes, but they are clip-ons. Pretty dorky. And here's another set of them. I don't know where that came from. I don't remember much about it. You know, you forget things like that. And then I bought them in different uh, frame sizes, but don't get a... Well, they're mainly twos. And they fall apart quickly, but it doesn't matter because they only cost a dollar. Buy another pair. That's why I got a whole bunch of spares. Alright, this is going to be a pretty long video, so stick with me because I am going somewhere with it, but I'm still talking about reading now. I like to read. Now, if I go to a cheap motel instead of a, a good one like uh, uh, Hampton Inn is good, you know, everything about them is good, and there's a bunch of others too. But if you go to one of those crummy ones that was a Holiday Inn and they switched it over, and now it's $70 a night, they're just terrible. They're dirty. They're, they're noisy, everything about them is wrong, and the proprietors are so cheap that they put 20 watt light bulbs in the bedside lamp. You can't read, and you can't adjust them. So I always take this with me when I'm traveling and wear to bed. I mean, I know it's funny, it's mockable, and, but this is very useful, except I don't know why they think they have to make a green and a red and a blinky, and all I want is the white for reading, 
but you know when you're going to bed and you're you're dozing off you you can't just turn it off you got to go through all of them so the, it, it's junk I know it's junk but it gets me by and then this is the one I often wear in bed well why don't you wear your optivisor because the optivisor has this thing on the back of it and it hurts your head even when you're on a soft pillow this and I don't know what brand that is is velcro back here and it's it looks cheap but it's very good and I'm gonna get back to this but I I carry this with me when I'm traveling sometimes this and this and a whole stack of technical magazines that's my traveling gear can we talk optivisor is a brand name and to me it's they're excellent now I think there's all kinds of other brands that you can buy and it is gonna cost you about 50 bucks for one of these there are other brands that might be a little cheaper I do not know but you can buy them with different lenses this I have found I've done the research for you the number three lens is what you want and the number three lens they're all always marked is in fact 1.75 power and the focal length is 14 inches and that's just right so 14 inches you know is about well it's a foot away from your work so you don't have to get right down at your work so that's why it's also good for reading but do not buy some of the other lenses and I think they offer four or five lenses and at one time I had to do the experimenting because it, it doesn't really recommend one in the catalogs but here is the number two lens that's one and a half power with a 20 inch focal length you can see these are scratched up because I have used them all but that's many years ago and then this is the number five you will not want it two and a half power because the focal length is eight inches so not all that useful and then you can buy buy optivisor one of these and I don't know where this came from and I don't know what it fits so perhaps it fits this I just don't remember you know when it moves out of the way and I don't know what power it is because I don't use it and they are adjustable and they have excellent frictions here like a welding helmet that will hold it in place and a sweat band this one is one where I actually have worn it out but still lots of life I did have one that broke and I had to throw it away but it probably was really old so I do recommend these very much again getting back to this one I do not know the brand but I it also has to be the same power as the number three because I just did an experiment with uh, putting a coin down here and in order to get it in focus it was 14 inches the same as this but I I like this one it is extremely light compared to this I should weigh them but and compare them but it's, it's very very light and it doesn't bother you can wear it all day or in my case all night sometime I wake up in the middle of the night and I still got this on well you'll get old someday too all right let me show you something else here this is a gadget and my daughter bought me this for Christmas and I hope she's not watching but I do not like it and I'll tell you why first of all there's the battery pack it makes it kind of heavy secondly I don't really need that light I got all kinds of other lights which I'm going to talk about in a minute so I don't really need that and the other stupid thing is it's got this type of on and off switch so it's pretty easy to leave it on and forget about it and it is incandescent it's not it's old enough to where it is not LED so the batteries are big they're double A's or something big and heavy but this is what you want probably you shop guys and you'll see a lot of other guys wearing them and even my dentist wears one like this but then he's got some other gadget that goes on it but I can't get anything out of him I told you one time he's not very talkative and he has zero personality he's in the wrong business but he is a very good dentist I've talked about this quite a few times I bought this in 1966 when I worked at Osborne Engineering when I first started using a height gauge and they had one pretty much just like this and I noticed the other machinists used this it had a magnet and even though I, at that time I was 21 that was so helpful because these 25 scales are extremely difficult to read 
Well, you can even see, I think, in the video how helpful that is to read the vernier scale. And then I just discovered in another video, you'll see it in another video as well, that, and I've had this for years. A lot of my stuff came from auctions or garage sales. Obviously, old men that died <laughs> had all of these, these uh, sight aids. But anyway, this is very handy. For instance, if you wanted to look at a penny. Well, who wants to look at a penny? That's your coin collector. But I only discovered this the other day, that it has a magnet also and can be used for such a purpose. So that's pretty nifty. I'm going to keep that out on the bench. And I know that I've got some other ones around here that are similar. Oh yeah, here it is. That's got two magnets on it. When you buy a toolbox, if you, if you ever buy a complete toolbox, you're always going to find magnifiers in there. I guarantee it. And tweezers and all kinds of other little gadgets. So if you ever get a chance to buy a complete box, even if it's $500, it is a bargain if it's got stereo tools. So buy it. I had this loop <laughs> hanging from a nail in the garage. This is the first time I ever put it on. And it's kind of awkward, but looking at this penny, can you tell how far away it is? But it's perfectly in focus there, and very easy to read, e pluribus unum. Of course, I knew it. One of many, or something like that, it means. So, if you need high power magnification, something like that will be helpful. I don't care for them. You know, I've got so much junk, I don't even know sometimes what I have. That's the bad thing. But I'm kind of taking inventory on these today, and it took me a long time to put this all together. But I, I just picked this up and thought, what is this? Well, I know it doesn't fit the Optivisor, but it looks like it fits this. Like it's got four screw holes, but neither one of these tells what the power is. You know, you think, you'd think they put that on there, wouldn't you? I mean... So there's somebody to smoke and dope, or on cocaine at the factory, in, in management. Or they would have that marked, like Optivisor, you know, 70 years ago, they thought, hey, we better put the number on there. Well, no kidding. So whoever made this ought to wake up. Well, I had a rant on that, I'm sorry, but that's true. Well, I realize I have one of these loops, too, but I couldn't even figure out how to work it. You know, it doesn't seem to stay on the frame properly, and I don't want to mess with it because I don't really like these, but I also have a pair in the box. It's the Universal Easy On Loop, and it is two powers, two and a half and one and one eighth, because there's two lenses. Again, one that I'm probably not going to use. Oh, I have another little rant for you. I finally went, I need new glasses, so I finally went to, I went to Gailey Eye Clinic, that's what I did. And I got the optometer, I got the prescription. Well, and it isn't really much different. Matter of fact, there was no change. But nevertheless, it's a current prescription, and they charge too much, so I'm going some other place to get the glasses. Because some places, they give you nine pairs, you know, for only $120. You know those places. But anyway, no, I would never go to one of them. There's probably a lot of you out there that just use a magnifying glass, and some of them have two lenses, the big one and then a little one here. But if they're plastic, they're probably not much good, but this one, as you can see, is glass. So those are okay. You know, this thing, I might as well throw it away, but it came out of one of these that I had to throw away where the light wouldn't work. Transformer went out, so I don't know why I'm keeping it. I, actually, for my grandkids, so they can look at insects and things like that. But looking here at the bench, I have a variety of, of other magnifiers, and this is kind of a nice one because it can be carried in the pocket, and I believe that that's probably what somebody did because it's dirty and it's pocket worn. But that's a fairly handy thing. 
to carry in your pocket, isn't it? Okay. Take that along when you go to an auction or a garage sale or something like that. And all kinds of other little mag... Well, I showed you that one. Here's another loop that is not the same as the one that I showed you right here on the wire. Never have used that either. These are lenses out of cameras. And I just threw a couple of those away yesterday. Larger ones. They came out of projectors because I finally realized, what good are they? Why am I saving? Out they went. Now here's a kind of an expensive item. This is a Mitutoyu. Very seldom have I used this. It has a lens cap. You can change the focus a little bit and the whole idea for instance if I put it on this penny or a cutting tool well there's a cutting tool but it's not going to set flat so I'll just use the penny instead but you do need a flashlight or a light source like that and boy that is a good magnifier that probably is a very high quality optical item have I ever used it? not really not sure where I got this I would call it a shop microscope and it is Bosch and Lom so it would be of the highest quality and it is used also like this, there's a penny but consider that there's a cutting tool under there, a carbide insert or something like that but again you need your outside light source for that something that I have used very seldom. I did have one from Bosch and Lom years ago that had batteries in it but the batteries leaked and ruined it. I had to throw it out. I mean it I mean ruined. Here's a little magnifier that you can hold in your pocket. It has one lens two different powers or you can use them together. Now when working in your shop you need good lighting and I have a lot of LED lights on the ceiling which you can't see but I just recently got this from Banggood LED and it's a very good work light it's got a magnetic base it can be used on any machine and sometimes I keep it here on the bench I also use this sometimes this is a, a light for photography but also a good work light and then finally, and I'm sure you all know this, that we have these wonderful LED flashlights now. They are so bright. And several of these are recent gifts to me. So th these are nice. I'm sure you have these. But avoid the real cheap ones like you might get from... Uh, or freight, you know, such as this, although I do find some uses for this. But the second you need them, they quit on you, and I told you the magnet fell out of this one time on me, so they're just incredibly poorly made, but then again, they're giving them away free, basically. And when you buy your digital tools, electronic tools, make sure you get them with the larger letters. Now, this is easy to read. I'm not saying that's hard. Very easy for me to read, even without glasses. And this one by Shars is even larger, and Shars makes one even much larger than this as well. And I think other companies do, but avoid getting the real little ones. For instance, I got rid of a Sterrett one that I had. It was pretty old, worked fine, but the numbers were much, much smaller than this. So do yourself a favor if your site is getting poor. Remember also that I'm looking through cataracts. So that is another handicap. I have a lot of handicaps. You will too when you're 76. Well I talked about reading verniers and I just recently got this gear tooth caliper and it has two verniers on it and they are so tiny and there's a video coming out on this. Maybe it'll already be out. But this is mandatory probably even for an 18 year old boy to read that and plenty of good light should you ever buy yourself tools with vernier scales make sure you get the 50 graduation 
All of the older ones are 25 graduations like this. Very small, very hard to read. And that wasn't satin chrome. But look at this steret. It's not particularly new, but there's the 50 scale in satin chrome. So much easier to read. You probably knew that. Here's the KBC catalog. Now, no matter what shop catalog you look at, you're going to find several pages of all of the things that I described. There's the Optivisor and it's $55. That includes one lens, but just all kinds of other magnifiers. So look through your shop catalogs. And always buy the better stuff. Do not buy the, the cheap junk. Or you have to buy it twice. That looks like something like the black one that I have, doesn't it? But it doesn't have Velcro on the back. And then on the following page we have shop microscopes. And I'm going to show you one in extra credit here. And several things over on this page as well. And you can see some of the better stuff here gets pretty expensive. You probably do not need that. Alright, that concludes this video. I hope you liked it. But that's for the common man. There is extra credit coming because we're going to take a little field trip right now out to my garage. And I'll show you just a few more interesting things which will take about five minutes. And uh, so I'll see you out there for extra credit. Otherwise, so long for now. Well, thanks for sticking with me. This is extra credit. So I'm out in the garage now, and I wanted to show you this shop microscope. Now, this is a very high-quality instrument, Bosch and Lom, And it came from the great West Clocks factory. And you probably saw it when I first acquired it. I paid little or nothing for it. I hate to think what it cost. Now, a shop microscope like this, this is 20 power from what I can gather. But it is not meant to examine uh, a blood or, you know, a cells or anything like that. It's not that powerful. But it sure is powerful to examine parts. And I, I have a bug here, a stink bug, that I was showing my grandkids. You know, that really magnifies that. It's pretty awesome. And when I was at Caterpillar, they had a lot of these in the inspection department to examine fuel injectors. And it was just the right power. And note also the Bosch and Lom light source. And it's adjustable. Not uh, LED though, it'd be pretty old. And it really has to be used, or the reflector or something of that nature. So this is no toy for children. It's an awesome instrument. You can raise and lower it there and you've got your focus here. And I don't know what all, I haven't really used it much. Now it says something about power right there. Oh, that's the extra lens. I'm not sure what this is all about. Okay, that, that is in regards to this. And these were made so that you could use them all day long and they weren't uncomfortable on your eyes. And so they might have even used these at West Clocks to assemble hairsprings and tiny, tiny parts. And I talked to a woman once that her job was hairsprings. And I said, oh, you must have hated that. He said, oh, no, I loved it. So that really shocked me. She said, oh, we, we loved working at West Clock, she said. And she was talking about all the girls that she worked with, you know, many, many years ago. This lady has passed on, but I found that very interesting. Remember West Clocks in my hometown employed 4,000 workers when I was a boy, and my wife worked there when I met her. This is my floor-mounted Shear Tomiko 
optical comparator, sometimes called a shadow graph. And I have shown it before, but never was able to arouse any interest. I now have the unit turned on, and that is a 1 4th 20 socket head set screw. And when we look down here on the screen, you can see that it is greatly enlarged. And at this point can be compared with templates and, and uh, the, there's a graph here on the screen. I'm not sure if you can tell that. But it's a very good way of inspecting parts and examining them. But remember, you're only seeing a shadow of it. But I still find it very interesting. I wish this was a table model instead of a giant old Westinghouse television. I am aware that it is extremely dark in this corner, but there are two huge micrometer dials here, one here and one here, that allow you to move your work back and forth and find the exact position that you have uh, your work on the screen. But, all right, what do we have here right now? That's a hypodermic needle. Now let's look at the tip. Boy, I'd hate to have that thing jabbed in me. Can you see how <laughs> dull it is? Not dull, but it's bent at the tip. Unless it's manufactured that way, but I doubt it. Is that in focus? And another obvious magnifier that we all have with us is uh, the ubiquitous cell phone. So you can greatly enlarge something like your vernier and take a look at it. And I think there might be app magnifiers too. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm just using the regular screen. And one other great source, of course, is your television set in conjunction with a camera. And I often use that when I'm making my videos. And I can zoom in. You're not going to be able to see this, but I can zoom in. And this is quite large on my set. And I think that's only like a 19-inch monitor. And what happens sometimes is I go ahead and make a video. I publish it. I look at it on the screen, you know, to, after it's already published. And I can see I made an error. I didn't read it right. But now I can see it on my 55-inch big screen TV. So <laughs> my... Uh, stupidity and um, uh, caught up with me and that's why sometimes there's mistakes and people say oh well look you did, you misread this or you did this well alright but now it's already published and I cannot correct it alright that's the end of the extra credit and end of the video thank you for sticking with me those of you that like extra credit and enjoy it when I beat a subject to death See you next time. This is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher.